Oh, hi there, it's Christmas Day. I'm all by myself with my dog, with no one, nothing, and um, no rights, no legal help. It's been a disaster. I'm making a statement now about my whistleblowing. My whistleblowing was done because I have felt an obligation to call out corruption as a citizen of this country because um, I've been a participant in this country and I maybe foolishly believe in the right of law and that um, people have faith in the justice system. I've been victimised abhorrently over years um, to the point of death and beyond. And victimisation is against the law. Unfortunately for me, I was also victimised when I made my whistleblowing statements. Now, I'm eligible to make a public interest disclosure for the following reasons. First of all, I'm the former spouse of an ASIO employee. Um, that makes me eligible to make a public interest disclosure. The second thing is that I'm a public official. I um, worked as a consumer consultant in a public hospital and that also makes me a prior public official. And the third reason is that I was contracted to work for the NDIS under a government contract and if I'm under a government contract that also makes me eligible to make a public interest disclosure. And the last bit of absolute unmovable um, fact of evidence is that I have a federal court document by Scott Treadwell that is from the federal court, which is um, a document which has their letterhead on it. And it's not merely an opinion, um, it is a stated fact. And that fact says they're satisfied that I was employed by the DSS. Now that fact alone should have paved way for my work cover to be paid when they said I wasn't an employee for the purposes of the SRC Act. But as we know, when you're victimised as much as I am, and the corruption's so profound, so intelligent, and has so much deception and smoke and mirrors, a fact isn't even a fact anymore when you've got the money, the power, um, to obliterate and destroy your enemy. Now, I've been the enemy of the government, and that's proven because I'm a filed whistleblower at DSS, at the Federal Court, at the NDIS, um, and the Office of Prime Minister and Cabinet, and at the Ombudsman, and I can't remember where else, but a few other agencies. And as a whistleblower calling out corruption, um, it puts me in a pretty precarious situation. That is because I've called out that many public officials have acted unethically to do with their um, position and their obligation to act within the Charter of Human Rights. And they're supposed to act ethically and um, morally and um, without victimization or prejudice or discrimination. And um, a lot of these people, dozens and dozens of them, just about all of them in the public office have absolutely done so when it comes to the individualized case of dealing with me. I've made some enemies. I am a vulnerable person. Um, people have threatened to kill me and Steve, my former partner, has threatened to kill me and my dog. And I'd just like to say to police, I want there to be an AVO put on his name. There isn't one yet. It needs to be done immediately. Um, I'm worried that they'll kill my dog and, and me. Um, so um, look, as a person who's um, not acknowledged as a whistleblower, and I've put this all out in the public domain, it now makes me a sitting duck for persecution and for retaliation and retribution. Now. I was already a, a, a target of people very many years ago, and I've had all my prosperity intelligently, maliciously redacted from me in a conscious way, which is out of step with the Charter of Human Rights of a person with a disability that Australia is a signatory to in 2008, and which was ratified by the government. Um, these ethical um, underpinnings that underpin all laws in Australian society have been absolutely obliterated and um, the abuse has been profound and the government is literally corrupt. Um, it is corrupt in such a way that has identified singularly me as a target and um, there is a different set of rules when it comes to me and there is a different set of rules when it comes to every Joe Blow who is your ordinary Australian citizen. I'm not an ordinary Australian citizen because um, I've been in the public domain, I've been a former illustrator for the Age and the Herald Sun, I've got a controversial PhD that any government who expects people to follow would want to have in the public domain or even read. 
I'm the former partner of an ASIO agent, and um, I've actually been a public speaker for decades in this country, and I've spoken all around um, Australia and internationally on local, state, and federal um, audiences in public with my brave narratives, and also I've spoken in Australian par Parliament, in Parliament House, and also um, across news and media, um, including ABC, Triple J, PBS, Stateline, Dateline, ABC, the list goes on. It is um, an unusual situation that um, a person such as me, with such a public profile and links to the government, um, has been victimised and oppressed, um, especially later in life. And I just want to say too that the corruption um, that is at the Public Interest Disclosure and Whistleblowing Scheme, which of, of course, I'm now not, um, I'm not, I'm not protected. That puts me at enormous risk of attack, vulnerability, and um, I am absolutely exposed to um, being arrested, being treated unfairly, being victimised. And it's a truism that I've been um, redacted all of my prosperity over my whole life because I've never ever had a lawyer. And that is also in defiance of the Charter of Human Rights of a person with a disability that is um, Australia is a signatory to and that has been ratified um, by the Australian government and endorsed by the UN. So I'm in a real crossroads and um, as an unprotected whistleblower, I'm now vulnerable to attack and the very place I was trying to get protection from, the government, actually have ended up to be my actual abusers and the people who are orchestrating and are behind my destruction. And that's um, aided and abetted by the legal system, powerful lawyers, powerful public officials, and um, it is um, saturated in um, how I've been mistreated in the shame, stigma, discrimination, and rejection of a person who is acknowledged having schizophrenia. It's not my shame to have, it's all your shame. And the thing is um, that I've been extra resilient in my, um, in my perspective and I've always stood by what I believe. And the other thing is that this makes this conspiracy to prevent the course of um, justice an incredibly cruel thing to do to a person who is already prone um, to delusion, to hearing voices, to reading into things, and to mimic those circumstances for a person who actually experiences them within him and of himself is a brutal and abhorrent way to treat someone. And in that way, my human rights abuses have not only been um, abused, they've been intentionally and malici maliciously aimed and designed to cause me harm and I died. And that's called murder, but I was revived. That was February, 2021. And three years later, there's no justice, but I'm doing this to get justice. I've had to do it because, and I've had to make these statements because the government won't protect me and I want my voice um, to be in the public domain so people understand that if I'm locked away or incarcerated or killed or I suicided, um, from the profound and systemic neglect um, that is happening to me, that is political and systemic, then people know um, that I'm the innocent one and it would be a real um, hypocrisy if I was crime, um, jailed for a crime or something that I've done or already admitted to or um, that I'm set up for and the extraordinary and brutal crime, the systemic corruption and the conspiracy is not acknowledged um, as, as an also a crime. That would be the biggest hypocrisy. And I'm doing this to protect myself. So yeah, I'm a failed whistleblower and I'm vulnerable. I'm under attack and I'm being attacked by the federal government. It's not okay. It victimizes me. My human rights are abuses. Um, human rights abuses have been documented by an NDIS worker. And that is a legitimate report that explains and observes the victimization the oppression, the rejection from government, from lawyers and um, places, um, even organisations and people. And it asks um, to give my human rights back and it asks that um, I have some prosperity because all I want to do is to serve the community as I've done for 30 years, but that has been impossible for me to do framed by my circumstance. 
that report was unacknowledged by every NDIS provider that I have, and um, they're under obligation to make that report to authorities um, because it is their contractual obligation to me as a client of theirs under the NDIS code of conduct. Now, none of those companies have acted to make that report. And in fact, all those companies have acted really to cause me harm and make me homeless and really persecute me and <laughs> drill in the nail. Um, and also that report has been taken to the Australian Human Rights Commission and the Australian Human Rights Commission is a statutory authority of Australia, which is there for the very purpose of investigating human rights abuses, has refused flat out to investigate it at all. And that elongates my human rights abuse, puts me in a vulnerable situation and proves the very conspiracy that I am um, claiming to exist. That's not okay. And the government has become my nemesis. And unfortunately for me, everyone's on board. Who would agree that I'm not mad? But um, just because I'm crazy doesn't exclude that a conspiracy to prevent the course of justice is actually happening. It's not okay that I've called out corruption to um, um, the public interest disclosure scheme in the government. And furthermore, it's corrupt in itself that I haven't been granted protection. That's my statement on whistleblowing.